Here on the blackboard I have two views of a cross peen hammer that illustrate how I shape my forging hammers. The one on the left is the side view of the hammer and the one on the right is the front view and this is the hole for the hammer handle. As you can see the shape isn't symmetrical. And the main difference is the size of the radius that I put on the sides of the hammer as opposed to the front and back edges. The size of the radius is exaggerated slightly in this drawing, but you do get the relationship between the front and the side view. The only reason that I radius these edges at all is just to minimize any damage to the anvil that might happen from a missed hammer blow. For the way that I work, there's no reason to have an excessively large radius on these two edges of the hammer, but there is a reason to not have a large radius, and that is it gives me an extra long flat face along this edge. And I want that flat face to be as large as possible, so I keep these two radiuses to a bare minimum. You can see how much of the flat face that I'm losing on this view of the hammer. So if I don't want to be left with a tiny little square in the center of the hammer that's actually flat, I need to have that flat face run right from the front edge of the hammer to the back edge of the hammer. So that's the idea behind how I shape my forging hammers. These are hammers that are used at the anvil and they're used primarily to shape and forge hot metal. And in my shop these are all cross peen hammers so they're easy to identify. The other group of hammers that I have in my shop is what used to be referred to as machinist hammers. They're just hammers that are used for driving chisels and cold metal working and just basic all around work that isn't forging. And the main difference between these hammers and my forging hammers is that the faces are ground perfectly flat and the edges just have a bare minimum of a radius. And the reason I do that is because when I'm driving a chisel I want to have the whole face register with the end of the chisel. I don't want to catch on a radius edge and have the hammer slip off the edge of the chisel and hit me in the hand. I use mainly ball peen hammers for this application again because they're easy to identify so you know what you're working with. Uh, I know this isn't a ball peen hammer but I didn't feel like drawing one. So in this video I'm going to be regrinding the face on one of my favorite forging hammers. This is a cross peen hammer that I reforged from a small sledgehammer and you can see how it's nicked slightly on one of the corners. When I'm doing the final finish on a hammer face or doing some light resurfacing, I prefer to use a sander rather than a grinder. So if you have access to a belt sander, that's ideal. Uh, but these uh, angle grinders with a flap wheel work really well as long as you don't try to take off too much at a time. Regardless of what you're using, always start by flattening the face and making sure that that face is square to the edges of the hammer. Once you have that established, you can go ahead and put in whatever profile you decide to use. Once you have your face established, you can go ahead and put in a hard chamfer on each of the corners and then make sure that those chamfers are even and then once you're satisfied with that you can go ahead and just round the edges of those chamfers into a smooth radius. As you can see this hammer head is octagonal in shape so I'm gonna have to compromise slightly between the ideal shape that I was after on the drawing board and the hammer that I'm actually working with. So what I have here is the front and the back faces and the two side faces of the hammer are exactly as I described on the drawing board but the angled faces that join those four sides together are just going to have to be a tapered grind that's going to go from one radius to another. It's, you're just going to have to blend it in as best you can. I'm able to use a file to do the final smoothing of this hammer face because I leave my forging hammers fairly soft as far as hammers are concerned. I don't feel there's any real need to have a super hard hammer face for a forging hammer. It's being used primarily on soft metal or to hammer tools that are being driven into soft metal. Also it's a lot easier to reshape a hammer than an anvil so if you miss and you hit your anvil it's better to have your hammer be damaged than your anvil. So I've always left my hammers fairly soft and I've had no trouble with them. So here's the new hammer face ready for forging. 
you can see how I have a large radius on both sides of the hammer and the front and back edges drop off pretty sharply. So that leaves me with a flat rectangular face in the center of the hammer and that I use for flattening obviously and then the edges are used for fullering. So basically what I've done is I've just recreated the cross section of my cross peen on the front face of the hammer. So if you can just imagine a cross peen that's stretched out sideways, that's basically how I have the shape of my hammer face. And that hammer face basically matches the shape that I have on my anvil. On my anvil there's a center strip that's flat and the edges of the anvil are fairly radius. So as I start tipping my hammer while I'm drawing out, the radius on my hammer is starting to match the radius that I have on my anvil. Here's one of the ball peen hammers that I use for chisel work and again the face is ground perfectly flat so I can maximize the contact area between the hammer face and the chisel. So other than making sure that the hammer face is truly flat on these hammers, I use them just as I get them. They have the factory temper and the factory finish. I don't reshape them in any way. They're just hammers. Hi, I'm Dennis and thanks for watching. If you like this video, by all means give it a thumbs up. If you want to support this channel, you have a couple of options to do that. The first, of course, is to just subscribe. Secondly, if you have any suggestions or photographs of things you'd like to see on this channel, send them along and I'll do my best to turn them into a video. If you want to lend your financial support, you can do that in a couple of ways. First, if you're interested in making an ongoing contribution to this channel, just click the Patreon icon and it'll take you to my Patreon page and you can donate whatever amount you feel comfortable with. If you want to make a one-time contribution, just go to my channel homepage and click the donate button in the banner. So thank you for your support and with your help I'll be doing this for some time to come. I'll see you next time.